Hey everyone, welcome to Figure Fantasy. So we're here to discuss the build guide for S8. And um, I think you guys have enough um, pieces of her that you built her probably up to two, two star or three star like what I did. Um, didn't actually... S I pulled previously on her banner but only got one copy. So... Definitely, you're gonna be getting most of it from the current event with uh, Hot Toys All Star. So, you're gonna, she's gonna be good for entry or mid level, um, mid level in terms of um, type of player. You can use her at the star, but again, after that, you're gonna have a difficulty moving her up, especially if you're gonna be getting more copies of her after this event. Although you can get stickers, by the way. So, anyway, let's move on to her skills, guys. So, uh, what makes S8 good is actually her basic attack. So, her attack speed is fast. And usually, it's going to be uh, plus 50% boosted damage up to level 3. Okay? And uh, her ultimate. So, initial energy is 70 Definitely, she's going to be faster in terms of um, in terms of uh, who goes first. She's going to be faster with the initial energy of 70. Charm the current target for 3.5 seconds. The charmed enemy will take a large amount of damage at the end of the charm effect. Okay? If the enemy is defeated while charmed, they will explode and deal damage to all remaining enemies. While I like her ultimate uh, so much it's gonna be hard justifying that I bring her because she's only a three star most of my most of the figures that I bring are already beyond uh, they are they are already in diamonds when I bring them so I'm not, not sure if I'm gonna bring her but definitely gonna try to build her so upgrade effects boosts the attack speed of the charmed enemy by 100% and level 3, Charm enemies take a small amount of damage each time they use their basic attack. Okay, so Charm charm enemies will be will attack their own allies but will be silenced. Passive skills can still be triggered and buffs. Buff effects will, will be granted to, ally, to our allies instead. So, one target, your, your possible targets are... are um, what do you call this? Figures that don't rely so much on ultimate. So have good damage per se in their um, basic attack. So Lawless, this is actually her adornment boost. Um, the ultimate charmed enemies deal 70% additional damage while being charmed. And loses 10 energy when the charm effect ends. So this is one good uh, adornment that she has. Let's move on guys to number th um, to her passive predatory instinct basic attacks have a 25% chance to deal additional damage to the current target and the enemies behind it while healing yourself according to the amount damage dealt okay so it's great that she has healing in her kit so additional damage and healing itself so upgrade effect is after using your charm your own basic attack becomes a two hit combo for 3.5 seconds and at level three after triggering passive boosts attack speed by eight percent effect stack up to five times and the last one is the special which is i don't have yet so uh it's going to be a boost chance and restores health after a, each successful dodge boost attack by five and defense by 10 and boost dodge by 20 percent Okay, so her kit is basically built on her more or less her um, basic attack and her passive. The ultimate is going to be built around charm. So let's move on to her parts, guys, and see how you're going to be building her. Okay, for her parts, um, since she does have a little bit of health regen so 
Deal additional damage to the current target and enemies behind it while healing yourself according to the damage dealt. So she has a bit of a lifesteal um, uh, mechanic built into her. As we go back to her parts, I would prefer that you equip her with an attack speed set. Although a lifesteal set would give you additional lifesteal, but that would be so much redundant. You just need to make sure that she attacks quickly and also because her her basic attack should deal damage it should be a skill set so basic attack power plus 18 percent okay so moving on to her badge there are only two badges that i'm recommending for her so you, one is eternal phantom badge which should be your ultimate goal in um just in case you want to use her and if you don't have that this is your um you know your kind of replacement or your initial badge so it's going to be end time divinity badge also gives a 30 percent chance to deal extra damage to 100 percent of attack so that's for your basic attack so Again, both of these badges are good. Preferably get the Eternal Phantom badge. Start with the End Time Divinity badge if you don't have the Eternal Phantom badge or, or if you don't have any extra. Okay, so going back to her adornment. So this is one of the adornments that I like because these uh, this one boosts the ultimate. So charm enemies deal 70% damage while being charmed and lose 10 10 energy when charm effect ends so this is kind of moving towards um your ultimate the other adornment is kind of moving towards your passive so it depends upon you guys on which adornment you're going to be going through anyway when you summon for these these are very random so either which will help you anyway Okay, guys, so as far as team composition, I don't think she has a specific team to be to be put in. Um, if you take a look at the class. So there are a lot of vanguards ahead of her. If you don't have that master and if you don't have Kuroko Shirai, your best bet would be Rin. And I think she's going to be a good substitute for Rin. It, that is, if you build her. So she's she, she's gonna be better than Rin, I think so. So again, if you're gonna be moving up in terms of if you're using Rin now, and if you don't have these three here, then your best bet in building would be S8. So because these three are collab, so I, I'm not sure if you guys can still go back to the collab uh, and also even for Ultraman. So these four are collab figures. The best bet if you want to upgrade is going to be going to S8. That is why she has so much value because for new players, um, I don't think you could get those collab figures anymore. Um, hopefully the devs can change that mechanic and can buy them in the store. But at this point, as for your team comp, this, um, she can do well with any team. That's what I'm saying. Um, she can be put on any team. The, the challenge with her is that she is going to be built slowly because of the availability of her banner or her copies. Okay, guys. So my final thoughts for her. Um, again... Without your collab figures, let's say for example you're just beginning the game, um, she's gonna be she's gonna be your best bet in terms of going on you know over Rin in terms of damage output in that in terms of what she can do. But again, she is hard to build at this point. She requires a lot of copies to be good for the end game. Probably. If she reaches at least one or two diamonds, she's going to be good for endgame. But at this point, if you have her at three star like I do, up to five star, <coughs> she's only be, you know, she, she'll only be good up until the mid game. So those are my final thoughts, guys. So hopefully you have gotten S8 to where you want her to be. Um, I do not suggest that you really go all out on her banner. You could gradually get her from most store if you really intend to build her so thank you very much guys for staying this far take care stay safe this is the warden and i'm out of here